Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. Welcome back to another 2023 MPV preview. I'm recording this a few days after opening day, but you'll probably see this a, a bit later than that. So hopefully no major injuries between now and then. Uh, and the team we will be focusing on today plays in Osaka, and they are the defending Japan Series champions. It's the Oryx Buffaloes. Their record in 2022 was 76-65-2, tied with SoftBank for first, but they had the tiebreaker, so they won the pennant and obviously went on to win the Japan Series over Yakult. Their Team WRC Plus was 104, that was good for third in the Pacific League, and their Team FIP Minus was 88, which was number one in the Pacific. So this team was very much built on excellent pitching, especially down the stretch. Both their rotation and bullpen were impeccable, but their hitting wasn't bad by any means, as you can tell by their above average WRC Plus. They did, however, suffer a huge blow this, this offseason as the face of their franchise, superstar Masataka Yoshida, was posted to MLB and signed a five-year contract with the Boston Red Sox. So, in a way, the Buffaloes were rewarding Yoshida for leading the team to their first Japan Series title since 1996. Uh, you know, it was their first title since the merger in 2004 as well, a really big moment in franchise history, uh, and, they did, and they did it with almost exclusively homegrown talent uh, so something to be very proud of for sure but it's a new year now and if they want to repeat as pennant winners they will need to do so without their best hitter the buffaloes did however make some key additions to try to make up for the loss of yoshida and i honestly think they did a really good job uh, they, they put that posting fee money immediately to use bringing in catcher tomia mori formerly of the Cebu lions and in my opinion, Mori is a top five player in MPB right now. You know, is, is he a one for one replacement for Yoshida? No, but almost nobody is going to be uh, because Yoshida was a truly special player. You know, I suppose Kensuke Kondo, who was also a free agent, would have made uh, a lot of sense since he plays the same position as Yoshida and he's an elite pure hitter. But, you know, I actually love the Mori signing for several reasons. One, he plays a premium position and a position that is very scarce on top end talent in Japan. Mori is far and away the best catcher in Japan. Um, he's not as good of a hitter as Kondo, but he has more power and his defense behind the plate is not bad. So his overall value is higher. Uh, and I think that's proven by the fact that Mori won the PL MVP in 2019 and has posted multiple seven plus war seasons in the past four years. Um, he didn't have the best year last season, um, but that's because he missed a lot of time with a broken hand. Um, and all in all, I think Morty is a perfect signing for this team, and he's still pretty young, 27 years old. And then they signed a handful of foreigners in Frank Schwindel, Leandro Cedeno, Marwin Gonzalez, and Gerald Cotton. So given the circumstances, this was probably the best offseason the Buffaloes could have had. They addressed the loss of a superstar by signing another superstar, and they brought in a new batch of foreigners, which is important because they got, you know, almost zero production from their foreigners last year on the offensive side. Um, now, taking a look at this team's starting rotation, it is absolutely star-studded. Yoshinobu Yamamoto is the number one pitcher in MPB right now, uh, and he may even be the best Japanese pitcher of the 21st century. I made a video about Yamamoto's quest for history in February, so, so do check that out if you're interested. But long story short, he has a chance to win three straight MVPs, three straight Sawamura awards, and three straight Triple Crowns. Any of those achievements in isolation is unprecedented, but the fact that he has a shot to do all three at once is, is just unreal. Uh, and, and this will likely be his final year in MPV, so I expect him to make the most of it. Um, but he's not the only ace caliber pitcher on this staff. Right behind him, you got Hiroya Miyagi, Taisuke Yamaoka, Daiki Tajima, Sachi Yamasaki, and Shunpeita Yamashita. Miyagi in particular is outstanding, only 22 years old, and, you know, I think he's already a top three left-handed pitcher in the country, if not number one. And so Yamamoto and Miyagi is probably the strongest one-two punch in the league. I don't think anyone can compete with that, really. Um... But then you also have Yamaoka, who on most other teams would be an ace in his own right. He's dealt with some injuries in recent years, but when he's right, he can absolutely dominate. Tajima, another young southpaw, first round pick back in 2017, and he's coming off a career year in 2022. Yamasaki is a veteran. He's a swingman, probably the worst of the rotation guys, but still a solid pitcher. 
And then Shumpeta Yamashita is a 20 year old top prospect who throws in the mid to high 90s with wicked stuff. Just made his MPB debut on opening day, looked really good. Uh, and he has the potential to become the next Yamamoto. That's the kind of ceiling he has. So this rotation is pretty much unmatched, you know. It is one of the best rotations in modern and modern MPB history. And then that bullpen is elite too, um, especially that three-headed dragon that formed in the late second half uh, of 2022, Yuki Udagawa, Soichiro Yamazaki, and Jacob Wagaspak. Without those three collectively, there's no way the Buffaloes win the pennant last year. They gave up like one run over 40 combined innings in September and absolutely dominated in the postseason as well. Udagawa and Yamazaki were both on Samurai Japan. They can both touch 100 miles per hour, and I think Udagawa's bullet forkball is one of the best pitches in the world, period. In the, in the unlikely scenario that any of, any of those three falter, however, they have plenty of other arms like Shota Abe, who had a sub-1 ERA last year, Motoki Higa and Yoshihisa Hirano, two experienced veterans, etc., uh, etc., et you know, the rotation is elite, and the bullpen is just as good. Uh, and, and that's why I'm not overly concerned about their offense, because Yoshida's departure is absolutely absolutely going to be felt, no doubt about it. But even if they regress to like a 96, 97, you know, WRC plus as a team, they can win a ton of ball games with that deep pitching. Tomi Amori, who we already talked about, uh, will be the primary catcher. He'll probably DH quite a bit too. Schwindel can play first base or DH, but they also have Yuma Tongu there up-and-coming slugger with 20-plus home run upside. The middle infield is a bit of a question mark, yes, uh, if they want to really go young. They got Kotaro Kuribayashi and uh, Ryo Ota, but they also have some veterans like Roichi Adachi, Masahiro Nishino, and, and then Marwin Gonzalez as options. Yuma Mune is a lock at third base, back-to-back -back gold glove winner. He can hit for contact and get on, get on base at a decent clip, but we'll have to see if he can hit for power on a more consistent basis. And then that outfield is okay. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. Keita Nakagawa had a breakout year last year. I'd like to see him walk more, but he can hit for a high average, and he has he does have double-digit home run pop. Um, and, you know, maybe not high double digits, but low double digits, like 12-13. Uh, Shuhei Fukuda isn't going to do much with the bat, but he's a good fielder and runner. And then Yutaro Sugimoto won the PL home run crown in 2021 with a breakout campaign. Uh, came back down to earth last year. He is a late bloomer, so, you know, it could just be that 2021 was a fluke. But I think he's legit, you know. He's a very streaky hitter, uh, but he hits the ball really hard. And if he gets off to a good start, then he can easily hit 25 to 30 homers again. Uh, the Buffaloes also have some younger prospects like Ryo Tokita or Tokumasa Chano that have a shot at making an impact this year. So I think what this offense lacks in, in firepower, they make up for in depth. They're probably going to be towards the bottom of the league in home runs again, but, you know, they didn't need homers to win games last year. And and like I said, the offensive production doesn't have to be crazy. As long as their main guys like Mori, Mune, Nakagawa, and Sugimoto do their job and have average seasons, doesn't even have to be good seasons, just like 50th to 60th percentile type outcomes, I think that elite pitching is going to carry them uh, to a playoff spot. It's going to be pretty tough to keep pace with the Hawks again. But the Buffaloes have won the pennant in back-to-back -back years. So, you know, they clearly have something going going right. And I wouldn't bet against them. Uh, but let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.